shot outside the Washington Hilton Hotel after he gave a speech by John Hinckley. And of course, the previous assassinations, 1968, Robert F. Kennedy, just after he won the California Democratic primary, and the assassination attempt of George Wallace, 1972. Karen Skinner joins us now, a former foreign policy advisor for the former president and a Fox News contributor. It joins us now. You know, uh, Chiron, we see these horrifying pictures and it happened so fast and the president had the, the, the presence of mind to feel his, his cheek and then go down. And, and we haven't seen this for a while. And we've kind of forgotten about this unfortunate, tragic part of our political history. What is your sense about this in this early hour tonight? Eric, you're so right. We have a history of political violence, of political assassination, of political assassination attempts in the United States, and sometimes we think we're past all of that. But the reality is that political violence is kind of baked in to the American tradition. And um, when you, you think that, um, about the Ronald Reagan era, he was shot two months into his presidency, recently turned 70 years old, lost half his blood, had a bullet lodged in his body, walked out of the um, hospital um, about two weeks later, um, standing up straight with a, a bulletproof vest on, but a sweater over it, um, doing exactly what Donald Trump did today with his lifting his hand, putting his fist up, um, telling people to fight. Reagan did the very same thing. I will walk out of this hospital and leave my nation. So we have this history of violence. We have a history of recovery from political violence. And we've had some remarkable political actors who show enormous courage and resiliency during times of danger. We saw that with Donald Trump um, earlier, hours ago. We saw that with Ronald Reagan in um, 1981 at the start of his presidency. Intensified. Obviously, uh, there are adjustments that could be made in terms of the president's schedule, but um, ultimately, the president, the former president himself, will um, have great influence on that. Would you expect everything, given that these are indoor venues, not outdoor venues, that, as you say, already have high security, there will be mags there, there will be other security in place and things that people can't even see that are there, that they would be able to feel confident about going ahead with the schedule? Well, I imagine so that they'll they'll want to continue to go forward. We don't want uh, every, you know, any incident to preclude us from uh, from participating in our democratic process. That said, uh, they will make sure that they're uh, every all hands on deck, so to speak, that every uh, mechanism and everything that they can have in place will be in place. And with a higher level of intensity, I mean, they're already going to be uh, very you know, alert to any other uh, suspicious activity. But given that we've just had an uh, assassination attempt, uh, there is going to have to be increased um, increased intensity on the security measures. And given the fact that this, uh, this last attempt was on a rooftop, it was an outdoor venue. Uh, so different venue, different type of venue, but they'll still want to make sure that all of the um, aspects are being covered, ingress, egress, you know, the neighborhood, the areas, uh, the airports, all of it will be affected. I want to go back to Shaq Brewster, because Shaq, I know in advance of the RNC, you've been having conversations. It's usual in situations like that, lo that local law enforcement, which Carmen knows well, are part of it. So that would mean uh, Minnesota law enforcement, National Guard, the, 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 mini the, the Minnesota National Guard. But what else have you learned? And, and I understand these conversations obviously were before the assassination attempt on the president's yeah. life. But how confident were they feeling about the security posture they have? So, you know, the thing about these conventions, these are level one national security events. So inside uh, the secure area, that's the responsibility of the Secret Service. And that's the Secret Service. They said they've been coordinating with some 16, at least 16 local, state and federal agencies around Milwaukee. There's big black barriers that have been uh, erected throughout this uh, throughout the city. And that inside that area, that's where uh, airport style security screenings go through. And that's where your credential is required. 
You guys know this, some of you guys probably know by now, but uh, what happened in Pittsburgh today with our former president, Mr. Trump, you guys know that. left-hand side uh i seen a uh plan view of the the trajectory of the uh the shot that took took place or shots which were directly above my friend's heads and i in line with uh when mr or when our president mr trump got shot and uh i think it was like six or eight shots i heard popping off there was a short uh pause and then I think there was two more that went off after that. And then it's just everything was crazy. And you were there with friends you mentioned. I'm just curious, are you from the area yes. or did y'all drive in for the rally? You're, you're from there. And so this is yeah, really I, personal because it's, it's your home. Yes, I, I'm an hour and a half away. I've attended a lot, probably a dozen or more of uh, President Trump's rallies. And then I had other friends that were probably half hour to 35 minutes away that uh, met me down there. And at what point did you realize, really realize what was happening and that former President Trump was in danger? And, and how did that make you feel? Uh, you know, it was probably after the, the third pop and sound, I realized that the something was going on and it so did the crowd around me we all hurried up and just everyone just laid down flat people were yelling get down get down and as we you know so everybody was laying down and then like i said there was a short pause and and two more pops went off and after the pause and then the shot started up again uh, i didn't know i was worried that there was more than one shooter and they were actually like running towards us or something shooting so it, it was it was pretty scary, very scary. I cannot imagine. How does it make you feel that this tragic event took place yesterday evening? Well, you know, uh, with everything President Trump's been going through, uh, deep down we've all had this fear that that something like this would happen against his life, and. Uh, I mean, to happen in my home, my home state is is bad enough, but we're just we're just in such a, a bad situation with this country and how how the country's divided. I don't know what's going to happen. How things? I don't. I just I'm uncertain. How are we going to get past this to reunite this country? and get back to the way things used to be. We are just getting some new information from our Tom Winter. Uh, a spokesperson for the FBI's Pittsburgh field office, Carmen, says they are now confirming the name of the shooter, the alleged shooter who attempted to assassinate former President Donald Trump. They identify him as Thomas Matthew Crooks, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Our reporting had him at 20 years old. Thomas Crooks.
We are just getting some new information from our Tom Winter. Uh, a spokesperson for the FBI's Pittsburgh field office, Carmen, says they are now confirming the name of the shooter, the alleged shooter who attempted to assassinate former President Donald Trump. They identify him as Thomas Matthew Crooks, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Our reporting had him at 20 years old. Look, they're bringing Trump here. They're bringing Trump. You dirty mother. There goes Trump. There goes Trump. There goes Trump. There goes Trump. Do you hear me? Huh? The one top car, the window was blown out. Do them mother. Trump. Trump. Coming to Butler Hospital. Trump. Coming to Butler Hospital. Look, they're bringing Trump here. They're bringing Trump. You dirty mother. There goes Trump. There goes Trump. There goes Trump. Do you hear me? Huh. The one cop car, the window was blown out. Do them mother... Trump! Trump! Coming to Butler Hospital! Trump! Coming to Butler Hospital! someone who was here you weren't inside the event nope. but you were just outside tell us what you saw and what 
So, so we had a party here all day. At the, uh, you can see behind us at the, the Brinkles Farming Greenhouse here. We had a party. Um, and we all decided, hey, you know, when, when we hear Trump up there, we're going to walk up through the field, stand by the trees up there under the shade, yeah. and watch the, and listen to the rally. Right? We couldn't see him, but we could hear him. So we walked up, and probably five to seven minutes of Trump speaking, I'm estimating here, I have no idea, you know, but um, we noticed a guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, and, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle, absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him. You know, he's, he's crawling. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two or three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? hundred percent. hundred percent. And he, he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You saw him up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely. At least three to four were, minutes. And you were telling yep. the police from the Secret Service? We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the Secret Service who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see Binoculars. Him? Could they see him? Probably not because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But, but why is there not Secret Service on all of these roofs here? I mean, this is not a big place. Did you see, I mean, obviously everyone, when the shooting started, everyone was very panicked. Did, oh, you, did you see what happened to him at all? Oh yeah, they blew his head off. Okay, sorry. Secret Service blew his head off. Okay, just be careful because well, we don't quite know who's watching, but you, you're pretty sure they, they, they shot the guy. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Okay. Yep. You, you saw that happen? Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. And did you see them go up to him afterwards or? They, yeah, they crawled up on the roof. They had their guns pointed at him, make sure he was dead. He was dead and that was it. It was over. It's incredibly shocking. The guy was on the roof right there. You can see the white roof right there. Did you get a look at him? Could you? I, I no, other than he was in muted colors, tan type clothing. I, we saw the rifle flinging around as he was trying to crawl. I mean, we saw the rifle, 100%. Do you, I mean, do you know about guns? Do you know what kind of weapon it was? Oh, I absolutely know about guns, for sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, there is a rifle of some sort. I wouldn't know, you know, I wasn't close enough to read the label on it. No, but, sure. but it, was, it right? was a rifle of some sort. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you, how do you process what you've just seen? <laughs> I, I don't know what to say, man. All I'll tell you is, you know, if I, if I walked up close to there with, anything that can, Secret Service considered a, a, a problem, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you right now. But I don't know why a guy who we're standing there pointing out to police and Secret Service is crawling up the roof. Are you outside the security yes, right there by that tree. We were outside the security permit. But my question is, there's only a few buildings around here. Why is Secret Service not on every building? Here. Well, there's a whole bunch of questions, I think, that are going to come. There's a whole bunch of questions. Yeah. yeah. Yes, she was right in front of me. She kept going back and forth right in front of me. Yes. Tell us about her. I mean, nice horse, nice lady running with a flag. It seemed very, you know, patriotic. But what, what's, what's the significance of her? No, she just he asked me if I saw a horse. Okay. okay. All right, well, listen, I'm sorry you had to witness that. That was a terrible thing. And uh, you should stay safe with your family and uh, gotcha. your stuff. Um, thanks for your gotcha, time. Man. Tell me what you saw. Okay, I was in the first row right in front of President Trump. I heard first, boom, boom, I heard four boom, boom, booms. Immediately thought, fireworks. Somebody's still putting off yeah. fireworks. Yeah. Then the Secret Service jumped onto him, pushed him to the ground. What did he look like when you saw him, when he got up? So I'm just telling you now, I pushed him to the ground. That's what we saw. And not one of us in the front row either hid down or anything. We all stood up strong to make sure we wanted to protect him too. We wouldn't move till Trump got up. What did you see from him? So then 
the guys with the guns came, they clear right, clear left. Or they said, lift them. So they lifted him straight up. And Trump said, I gotta get my shoes on. But he wasn't, he was, he looked okay to me, but I saw a little bit of blood right here. On the side of his face? In the right cheek. It was like a teardrop almost. But then when he turned to the right, I could see the blood from the top of the ear to the bottom. It was not gushing, Just but it was, it was all the way down. And you're doing okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You weren't I, hurt? No, I thought something right. happened. But in my mind, I thought when they pushed him, he hit himself on something. Yeah. You know, almost like a burn, like a brush burn or whatever, you know, something. And then he put his hand up real big, like strong, and they walked him down.